Hi, I'm Deacon Nelson Lowe's from Resurrection in St. Clair Parishes. This is Liturgy of the Word for Thursday, October 17th, a day of memorial for St. Ignatius of Antioch. Let us begin this Liturgy of the Word in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us first acknowledge our own sins and ask our Lord and Savior for his forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you, were, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who adorn the sacred body of your church with the confession of holy martyrs, grant, we pray, that just as the glorious passion of St. Ignatius of Antioch, which we celebrate today, brought him eternal splendor, so it may be for us unending protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, to the holy ones who are in Ephesus and faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blemish before him. In love, he destined us for adoption to himself through Christ Jesus 
and accord with the favor of his will for the praise of the glory of his grace that he granted us in the beloved. In Christ, we have redemption by his blood, the forgiveness of transgressions, in accord with the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. In all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will in accord with his favor that he set forth in him as a plan for the fullness of times to sum up all things in Christ, in heaven and on earth. The Word of the Lord. The Lord has revealed his power to the nations. The Lord has revealed his power to the nations. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. The Lord has revealed his salvation known. In the sight of the nations, he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. The Lord has revealed his power to the nations. The Lord has revealed his power to the nations. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song and sing praise. Sing praise to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and melodious song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, sing joyfully before the King, the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The Lord said, Woe to you who build the memorials the prophets of the prophets whom your fathers killed. Consequently, you bear witness and give consent to the deeds of your ancestors, for they killed them and you do the building. Therefore, the wisdom of God said, I will send to them prophets and apostles. Some of them they will kill and persecute in order that this generation might be charged with the blood of all the prophets shed since the foundation of the world, from the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who died between the altar and the temple building. Yes, I tell you, this generation will be charged with their blood. Woe to you, scholars of the law. You have taken away the key of knowledge. You yourselves did not enter, and you stopped those trying to enter. When Jesus left, the scribes and the Pharisees began to act with hostility towards him and to interrogate him about many things. 
for they were plotting to catch him at something he might say. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In this passage, Jesus highlights a crucial tension between outward appearances and inward reality. The scribes and Pharisees prided themselves on their piety and adherence to the law, yet they failed to recognize the truth that was standing right before them. Their actions, honoring the prophets through elaborate memorials, were empty gestures if they did not also embrace the prophetic call to repentance and justice. Jesus' condemnation of the leaders also serves as a reminder of the cost of disciple of discipleship. Following him often means confronting uncomfortable truths about ourselves and our communities. It is easy to point fingers at others, but Jesus challenges us to look inward. He speaks of the responsibility that comes with knowledge and authority, especially for those in leadership roles. As Catholics, we must consider how our actions reflect the teachings of Christ and how we can support one another in living out our faith authentically. Furthermore, the passage concludes with a warning about the weight of judgment that comes upon those who reject the message of the prophets. This is a serious reminder that God's call to repentance is not just for others, but for each one of us. It invites us to be open to the ways God is speaking to us through Scripture, through the church, and through the experience of our lives. In our prayer lives, we're encouraged to seek a deeper relationship with God, to be attentive to his voice, and to respond with humility and a willingness to change. Our faith should be a living testament to the love and grace that extends to each one of us. It's not enough to honor the prophets. We must strive to embody the message of love, mercy, and justice that they proclaim. As we reflect on this passage, we should be asking God for the grace to be authentic witnesses of Christ in our world. We should certainly avoid being like the scribes and Pharisees who honored tradition without true understanding. We must certainly embrace the call to live out the gospel, being mindful of the teachings of those who came before us and carrying forth the prophetic mission of Christ in our own lives. In doing so, we can build a faith that is not just about appearance, but is rooted in love and action. So here are your two questions. Are there areas where we might be honoring God with our lips while our hearts are far from him? And secondly, do we participate in rituals and traditions of our faith, perhaps even with enthusiasm, but neglect the deeper call to embody the gospel in our daily actions and decisions? God bless you all. Amen.